Cloud Foundry is perfect for continuous delivery. <laughs> Furthermore, the hard part about continuous delivery probably is not your deployment infrastructure anyway. That said, Cloud Foundry is perfect for continuous delivery. So before we talk about continuous delivery, let's talk very briefly about continuous integration, partly because when I talk to people about continuous integration and say, you know, talk to me about continuous integration, they immediately say, oh yeah, Jenkins. Eh. No, the, the Jenkins part is actually the most boring part of it. You could do this with a bunch of cron, cron jobs and shell scripts. What's really interesting about continuous integration is that you've got a bunch of developers who are contributing stuff. And with every single contribution, first of all, before they check in, they're doing a local merge to make sure that everything's, and then running the unit tests. We have tests, right, people? Tests? Woo? Good, good. Yeah, you're just not enthusiastic because you're thinking beer, me, between, yeah. Anyway, so they run all the local tests, make sure everything is working well before it even checks in, then they check in, and then Jenkins or pick your favorite flavor of continuous integration takes over and runs the build and makes sure that everything is green. That is continuous integration by Martin Fowler's definition. The thing about continuous integration is that Jenkins is not the hard part. The hard part is the culture change that goes with that. Because if you've got a bunch of people throwing stuff in, and they say, it worked on my machine, and the fact that that build is red, not my problem, then you're going to have a problem with your organization. And in fact, I see a lot of organizations where they have a separate QA department that wrote a whole bunch of, end of, of, uh, a bunch of system tests, automated system tests, that the development team feels no sense of ownership over whatsoever, and those tests start failing, and the build is technically red, and it will stay that way for months because nobody cares. The, the, the people who wrote those tests don't have the power to fix it, and the people who do have the power to fix it don't think that those tests are valid. So the biggest problem with continuous integration is going to be the culture change. Now, let's talk about continuous delivery. You're laughing because you experienced this. I don't actually know you, so I, I'm not saying this because I know him. I'm saying this because I recognize that laugh. All right, so let's talk about continuous delivery. Hint, it is not just a whole bunch of, of CI, just like CI isn't uh, just a Jenkins server. Continuous delivery, by Jez Humble's definition, and he's the guy who wrote the book, so I'm going to go by his definition, it means that your software is production ready from day one. You could theoretically put this thing in production right now. It's now a business decision about whether or not you're going to. And the way you know that you could put it in production right now isn't because there's some theoretical notion of done or done, done. It's because you actually put it in something that looks like production all the time. So that's continuous delivery. You have some preconditions before you can get there. First of all, you're going to have to have fully automated unit integration system tests with the associated sense of ownership, and people believe that those tests actually test useful things, and none of this nonsense about known failures. Do any of you have tests where you have known failures? They fail, and you go, oh, yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, uh -uh, none of that. Um, you do need to have your continuous integration infrastructure stood up, whatever that is that it looks like. I don't actually care if you use Jenkins. I, we're, we're using GoCD, and we're really happy with GoCD on some things. We're also using Jenkins. We're using lots of things. So anyway, um, uh, you also need to have scripted automated deployments. Guess where Cloud Foundry comes in? The last one, the last one. David's got it right. Awesome. Now, so you're going to go from having a single build to having an entire pipeline with continuous delivery because you're not going to have a separate phase during which some QA people take over and do a bunch of stuff. So you're going to need to have that entire pipeline. And if any one of, just like with our CI, if any one of those thousands of tests went red, with your CD, if any one of those things goes red, and you're going to have entire like fan outs to test in all of the different infrastructures that you need to test in or all the different con uh, uh, conditions that you need to test in, if any of those things go red, if any one of those tests goes red and any one of those, in those various configurations, then your pipeline is blocked and you're going to need to clear it, which means that you have to have the culture in place that says, oh, something is red, I'm going to clear it. So culture changes, overcoming resistance, I hear these kinds of things all the time. Why would we even bother? Our customers don't want this stuff that fast. I, th that one drives me nuts. Um, <laughs> automation is expensive. This sounds really hard. What do you mean there is no QA phase? Isn't there the manual regression tests? What do you mean you're doing away with those? You must not believe in quality. Yeah, I love that one, too, as though that assures quality. 
Has anybody actually ever seen a really, really long manual regression phase assure quality? No? Anybody? Any, really? We'll talk after. Because I'm going to suggest that you're confusing despite and because. Anyway, <laughs> so not fair for me to pick on you. I don't know you either. I'm really sorry. Moving on. Change is super hard. However, um, each one of those excuses has a really good reason why it's not a valid excuse. And I'm happy to talk with anybody at length because I live, eat, breathe, and sleep this stuff. So I would say catch me during the rest of the conference, but this is kind of it, isn't it? Right, catch me on Twitter. I'm at test obsessed. So moving on. The actual reason for this talk, continuous delivery with Cloud Foundry, and why is Cloud Foundry perfect for this? Well, remember that automated deploy thing? Cloud Foundry has some super cool features that enable that automated deploy stuff to work really well for your continuous delivery environment. First of all, same exact code, different space. Now, there's a little caveat here because I'm not in marketing, and so I'm not just going to sort of say, oh, look, promotion. We don't actually have a promotion feature yet. It's kind of in that app application category that James Baer talked about in the roadmap session. However, you can make it look like we have a promotion feature by scripting CF. The CF command line tool, especially the version 6 Go-based version of the, the CF command line tool, super amenable to scripting. So you can script it to basically have something that looks remarkably like promotion from your um, deployment phase in your build pipeline. Yeah, the guy who's the PM for the CF tool, by the way, is looking at me and just grinning as I say that. Hi, Scott. Right. Second awesomely cool feature that comes with a little itty bitty teeny tiny asterisk. As James Baer talked about in the roadmap session, we don't currently have a feature that's called blue-green deploys. However, you can totally do blue-green deploys with Cloud Foundry because we, we have this, it's in the documentation, um, and contact me on Twitter, at testobsessed, if you have any trouble finding it. Actually, if you just Google blue-green deploy Cloud Foundry, you'll totally find it. Um, an entire set of steps about here's how you do a blue-green deployment with Cloud Foundry so that you end up with zero downtime to your users. If you're doing continuous delivery, you want to be deploying lots and lots, and if you're deploying lots and lots, and every single time you deploy, there's a non-zero probability that you have just dropped sessions or, or like killed your users, that would be sad. They will be very sad about that. So instead, if you, if you do a blue-green deploy, then they will be happy because they won't even notice the fact that you've been upgrading the code out from under them until you change the entire user interface. Don't do that to them. So moving on. Uh, I did want to mention our own example internally. I also run the, so, you know, I, with the squirrel, I totally forgot to do the intro and explain who the heck I am. I'm the director of quality uh, engineering for Cloud Foundry. Happy to talk about how we do build quality into our products at any time with anybody. Um, as part of that, I run the docs team. All of our docs run as apps on Cloud Foundry. So we do continuous integration and continuous deployment for our documentation as an application. So it's a great little use case because we're using our own stuff to deploy something that's very much production and that we very, very much care about. Um, all of our documentation is modular. We have a whole bunch of little Git repositories for good reasons that I'll explain some other time when I'm not standing between you and beverage of choice. But uh, as soon as a writer checks in a change to any of those, that, those modules, it kicks off three different builds because we have to publish three different versions of our documentation. And those three different builds that kick off, it might sound weird to build docs. Well, maybe it doesn't, depending on how much experience you've had with, with building docs. But in our case, what we need to do is assemble an entire doc set and publish that. And in doing that, we want to make sure we have no broken links. So our tests aren't tests of the application, which is just a little Sinatra thing serving up static content. Our tests are to uh, do link checking. So our little build pipeline for our production documentation involves checking something to, the, the, uh, uh, to one of the modules for the documentation that kicks off the build, that assembles everything, checks all of the links, then deploys to our staging site where we can do a review so that people can look at it. And then we can automatically, very, very quickly, uh, uh, turn that into something that's, that's live on the site, which means that we're actually updating our, our documentation sites at least once a week, frequently more often than that. Yeah, once a week sounds like it's not continuous, but it is continuous because we could do it at a moment's notice. So that's my example. 
Uh, you might be wondering things like, well, what about all of those automated tests? Cloud Foundry totally can't help you there because thinking is still required and there still are no magic bullets. It is six. We're done. <laughs>